What's up, movie world? So we're asking ourselves, do we see Olympus has fallen on the big or small screen? For the answer, let's search the movie truth. I review movie previews. Terrorists take control of the White House. Only one man has the balls and a huge horseshoe up his making him lucky enough to dodge bullets, explosions, and outwit under pressure. Professionals who have spent years planning this attack, which also happens to be the plot of G.I. Joe Retaliation. Familiar action set pieces and predictable personal struggle ensue, which all ends in an American win. Even though it's ridiculous and a little taboo to show things like this on the big screen, it's basically a less subtle version of Seven Days in May. We've never seen an attack on the White House on the big screen before. Well, yes we have. The five second version. Let's rename this America Dies Hard, starring the poor man's Bruce Willis. Yes, I like Gamer. Unnecessary backstory. Aaron Eckhart is president. Ashley Judd is the first lady. They'll make some beautiful presidential babies. Mustang, this is Big Top, bringing out the full package. Does the Secret Service really say like that? Camp David, now we know this is authentic. Can't the US afford a presidential snowplow to clear the way? Nope. That was a tree falling and hitting the limo. Personal tragedy the main character must now seek redemption for. No presidential babies. That's not what the movie's about. It's just main character thematic setup. Movies today need more of this. Unfortunately, it's cliche and illogical. He should blame the tree, not himself. Blame chance, fate, and chaos. He literally had no control over that situation. He should have no guilt whatsoever. Everybody knows you did the right thing on that bridge. Even the president. Angela Bassett. You get shamed out of the Secret Service and banished behind a desk where you get to bounce a ball all day. Rick Yoon. His character's name? Kang. Another character with the same name. Haunting image. Looking out of windows is another part of the demotion. I guess America's radar systems were turned off. I also like to go running in the morning, especially during terrorist attacks. Haunting image. Dudes with bandanas and baseball caps capture the White House. They have machine guns. He has an expression. Cool looking explosion. His name is Kang. Anton Fuqua. Morgan Freeman is... I want to speak with the Russians, the Chinese, the British, and the French. In that order. Terrorists still using blackberries. At this point, both of these characters become Al Powell from Die Hard. Oh, what's the main character's name, by the way? Mike Banning. Mike Banning becomes John McClane. 40 commandos breached the gate, 28 are left. At least he picked up better gear off of the dead bad guys along the way. One man is able to take out a massive team of operatives who have been planning to take control of the U.S. for years. Or maybe it was a last minute thing. Robert Forrester. Great actors can't make up for a lazy idea. Yes, he's protecting a young child. How do the screenwriters get us to care about a cliche? By using an even bigger one. By the way, they're running down a hall filled with bullet fire from the highly trained operatives planning to take control of the US who can't hit with multiple machine guns. Dirty dancing knee slide. Bluetooth. Really bad CGI. Really, really bad CGI. The White House has transformer powers. Love interest cliche. His name is Kang. If you attempt to retake this building, I will execute your commander in chief. Seriously? A f ticking clock? That's a chilling image. Is John McClane jumping off a helicopter onto the roof? Yes, he is. Really bad practical effects. Haven't seen this image before. At least they didn't call this movie White House Down. There's a movie called White House Down, directed by Roland Emmerich, the original destroyer of the White House, starring Channing Tatum as John McClane. It took over 100 years of movie making for the idea of this story to become realized, and only four months from now for a copycat parallel project to hit the screen. If you're not counting G.I. Joe Retaliation, it lowers story consciousness, ripping off Die Hard, filling with cliches, crappy CGI, and generic predictable story and dialogue. It'll be better than Under Siege 2, but worse than Die Hard 2. The movie truth totals reveal. Let's watch YouTube clips of the best parts on our smartphone. Now, it's up to you. Consider yourselves advised, for Olympus has fallen. Remember, we get more of what we pay for, so if we don't want let's not watch Until the next preview review, long live good movies. United States of America doesn't negotiate with terrorists.